all of your pins and here is the plug. And, oh. Ah, now where did that pin go? Op Amp here with Lockpickers United and today we're talking pinning trays. I've often had the experience where I've dropped a pin or other small part on the floor and it seems to just disappear. So today we're going to go through constructing uh, two pinning trays, one out of cardboard and one out of wood. You can see I have a selection here of pinning trays, uh, some 3D printed and uh, a couple that were commercially purchased. So we're going to go through all the steps to make the cardboard one, which is great for beginners, only requires a hobby knife. Uh, if you want to get fancy, you might use a ruler. And then this wooden one, which uh, I just made in the end of a board for a demonstration here, which will require a few tools. So let's get into it. So I've just got a regular cardboard box that I got a package in. I'm just going to take off the flap using a utility knife. You can use a hobby knife anything like that and I'm just going through the top layer here I don't want to go through both layers of the cardboard down through the bottom I'm just getting the top and now I'm just gonna peel the edge of that paper layer and pull that back now sometimes it comes off cleanly in this case it really didn't so I'm just gonna go into the corners and sort of just pick them and see if I can get that cleanly now you might need to do what I'm doing here which is sort of go under and break that glue seal between the paper layer and the inside layer. Here I'm just taking a screwdriver just to sort of help me plow through it. And you can spend as much time as you'd like or not really cleaning this up. And so you can see I'm just picking through it a little bit more. You can use some tweezers to pick this out and uh, really shine it up as much as you'd like. You can also even finish this if you want with uh, some sort of sealant. You can see right there that my pin fits nicely. Here I've got another piece. I'm just going to make like a flat cut out. So I'm making a square cut. And now what I'm going to do differently here is I'm going to go down to that bottom layer. So I didn't cut through it before, but now I'm just peeling along it. And you'll see right here, I've flapped it up so the corrugation in the middle is also cut. And now I'm just going to gently pull it and sort of zipper it back. And you see now I've got a nice little cutout. And so really in a matter of seconds, you have yourself a little tray. This is great if you're somewhere and you need to improvise. And of course, you can use that other half to make a complete tray. And then you've got a whole pinning setup that's portable. Uh, you're not going to cry over it if you lose it. If you need to lend it to somebody, you know, you're at a, a meetup or a conference or something like that. Um, so you can see here, I've kind of cleaned it up, made a little section for all your pins when you're pinning it up. and really works well there. Here's some plans that I made in a computer design program called Fusion 360. And this is useful to have if you're going to be making a pinning tray out of uh, wood or uh, cutting board, plastic material, any sort of material where you want to make sure that everything's nice and even and just have some nice guidelines. So you can even do it on a piece of cardboard and just have those guidelines there. If you'd like to learn how to make these plans in Fusion 360 and a CAD model for 3D printing, you can check out the link below to a video on my channel, OpAmp. So here I'm using a small utility knife. You can use a hobby knife like an X-Acto knife. And I'm just holding my template on there. And the goal is to really just score down the wood just so I have some guidelines on there. If you don't have a template, that's fine. You can find something online or you can just use a ruler to make some guidelines for you. Uh, here I'm making my lines and I'm, I am going the full width of the board, uh, but certainly if you only want to do part of the board, you want to make like a little compartment on the top or something, uh, you can do that. 
Now to make your lines nice and straight to the board, uh, you could use a square and that will really help you get some nice guidelines. And of course, you can also measure in between those guidelines to make sure they're nice and precise. Um, here's, I'm just doing this for demonstration. And that was a combination square. This is a speed square. Really, whatever tool you have on hand is probably going to work fine for this. Now you can see I've got my lines and it's very clear to see. And here I'm just using a wood chisel. And you can do this if you don't have a rotary tool such as a Dremel or a Proxon tool. And these cuts that we made where we scored the wood are really going to help keep that chisel aligned and also prevent the cut from tearing out at the edge. So I'm just going back and forth here gently. Uh, this is a pine board, so it's relatively soft. If you have something harder, this may be a little bit more difficult. And you can see I'm just going back and forth and I wanna just get it started and get that top layer off. And then I can go for depth after that. And here I've got that first cut done and I'm just coming down and cleaning it up, making it a little bit deeper. A good sharp chisel is really key here. And uh, the technique is a little off because I'm trying to work around a camera arm. And you can see here that the pin fits nicely in there. And of course you can extend this out and make it whatever size you like. So now I'm just coming down and extending the cut further. And when I get to the end here, you'll see I'm going to turn the chisel and just make that end cut a little bit deeper. And that's so that I don't splinter out the end of the wood. Now I'm just coming and I'm cleaning up the edge of that cut. It's still going to look pretty rough at this stage. Now I've got that extended slot to work in. Now I'm going to come in with a file and just sort of clean that up a little bit. And you can use a file or some sandpaper wrapped around a stick or whatever you have and just kind of clean that up a little bit more. And uh, if you put in even a little more work than this, you can really smooth it out and make it look really, really nice. So now I've got my rotary tool with a ball and bit in it. And you want to make sure for safety if you're handling a cutter or just putting the tool down to always unplug it. And we're going to use this rotary tool depth cutting attachment and uh, that will help us maintain a consistent depth and we can also use that for a guide. So what I'm going to do here is make sure my Dremel's off, plug it in, and I'm just going to come in here. We're going to turn it on and make just a little starter uh, divot there, just a little bit of, of depression, and that's going to be the top of our slot. You can see I've just made like a little mark, and that's just going to help us set and align that bit. Now I'm going to take my depth attachment, I'm going to screw that on, and we'll have to get that set to the proper depth. So you can see here that I can adjust that up and down, and what you want to do is just have it a little extended from the bottom. So you can see here that when I go on my edge of the wood, it's just extended in a little bit. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking my tool and I'm aligning it in that little hole that I made before, but I still need to make sure that I'm gonna be cutting straight. So I'm gonna take that speed square. This is actually a pretty good application for it because the, the framing square is so thick that it really provides a good rail for that tool to ride against. So I've got the board clamped at the edge of the bench and I've also got this clamp holding the square. And what I'm gonna do is turn on the tool and lower it right down into that little depression that I made there. And that'll start cutting. And now with some downward force and some force towards the square, it doesn't have to be a ton of force, just enough to hold it there. And I'm just gonna slowly cut down. When I get to the edge, I want to make sure to be careful that I'm still keeping my tool flat 
it's easy to sort of tip it off the edge by accident. And you can see there, I've got a little slot. It's nice and straight. It's nice and uniform. The edges might need a little bit of cleanup, but that's easy with a little bit of sandpaper or a file or something like that. And you can see that the rest of my score lines are nice and parallel and I can come in and just repeat the process with my tool. So I'm making that little uh, divot, that little depression in there for my start point and then moving the square over and then just slowly moving that down. And again, take your time with this. You don't need to apply a lot of force. Most rotary tools don't have a lot of torque or a lot of turning force. So really you're gonna have to take your time, especially with a harder material, if you're using certain plastics or you're using a uh, much harder wood. So here I'm gonna just make a few more cuts And here you can see I finished my cuts and any unevenness you can sort of clean up within the ends there using your tool. Uh, I'm going to take these files and just get a little bit of the roughness from the edge of the cut out of there. You can use some sandpaper for that. You can even sort of scrape a hobby knife across it. Uh, however much you want to clean it up you can. You can actually use some wood finish or stain on this. And you can see that the pins fit in there very nicely and they're not going to roll around or go anywhere. So you can see this is really a project that is accessible for people who have varying skills and varying resources. And a penny tray just really helps you with organization when you're gutting, making sure that all the small parts of the lock are not going to roll away or fall somewhere. So I hope you've enjoyed and gotten some value out of this video. If you'd like to see more Locksport related content, please subscribe below. For Lockpickers United, this has been OpAmp. Thank you for watching.